Hello people, how are you? How are we all doing today? What day is today? Thursday? Fabulous Thursday to you today and all everyone in here. How's it going? Do you all want to wave, say hello? How are you? I don't know what I've done with my chat window, but there you go. Uh, there it is. Pop out, found it. Okay, we can relax. How are you? I hope you're all well. I hope all is well with you. And uh, here we are again. Looking at this Wavelab cast, and this week we're going to be looking at uh, mixing. And not just mixing, you know, your podcast, but this applies to mixing anything, any content you'd be dealing with, including music. So if you are the musician and you decide to use Wavelab cast for, you know, your production, there's so much in here that you're going to get from it as well. Okay. So for the past while, we've been working away um when were we working away we we're working away i'm sorry i'm just checking my mic um we we're working away and we we're doing different aspects of wave lab cast including track inspector editing compression uh just loads of stuff okay so we we're taking one aspect as we went and we looked at the interface as well of course um so we're not going crazy into this there may be some professionals out there, but this is mainly directed at, you know, more um, non-professionals. OK, so if you have an idea for a podcast or some sort of content creation, we're here to help. OK, we've got some great comments going from the last shows. I was going through them all last week. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments of the previous video, if you would. OK, I can get back to you there. OK. Um, so I've a couple of questions to answer about that first, right? But what's the Wavelab cast? Okay, so Wavelab cast is an iteration of a thing called Wavelab, okay, from Steinberg. And it's basically a DAW, okay? The thing about Wavelab cast is it pairs it all back. I mean, there's a big daddy version of Wavelab cast there that they do sort of um, mastering on and stuff like that. I use it every day just for jobs, you know, bring it in, fix it up, get it out. I, I work in TV and film and digital all the time, you know. So what they did with Wavelab Cast was they paired it all back. And now you've got this amazing lightweight piece of software that is designed specifically to take on with an awful lot of the work and an awful lot of the stress that you might come across because, you know, you're not a professional podcaster, maybe, or you're not. Maybe you just want to dip your toe into this, but you know nothing about editing in a DAW. You know nothing about mixing in a DAW or sound effects or effects racks or anything like that. This is designed specifically for you. OK, though it can be. Listen, I'm using this on many's the occasion as well. Not every day, but listen, if I got a quick job to do, wham, in it goes, wham, bam, fire it out brilliant happy days so um what was the saying to you yeah so we're going to look at mixing tonight okay now one of those lovely people left a comment on there already and they were asking well where, where do we get it so i think it was the last video and it went from about seven minutes 36 i ex i, I kind of uh, describe how you find it um but I'm just going to do it briefly again, just to make sure that everyone is on the right page. OK, so what do you do? Where do you get it? OK, there's a couple of ways of getting it. OK, you can download it from the website directly or uh, one really brilliant way is um, if you own some hardware already or you had a version of Wavelab LE from some sort of hardware that you bought interfaces handheld recorders stuff like that you might have gotten a free license don't forget some of your pals could have got the same gear even if you didn't and they have that license sitting under their bed right so you might be able to put the arm on them okay so um with those upgrades from those licenses you get it for 20 bucks absolutely full version no restrictions in your face all right 
<laughs> brilliant brilliant so um let me just show you what wave labcast is first so that is it okay that's the interface we've been going through all sorts of aspects of this um over the past couple of months and you know what i'm sure there's so many is out there that if you're here um most weeks um you're going well it is actually okay it's not too bad so let me show you where to get it okay so i'm going to go over here to a browser and there's um steinberg.net okay and you'll find yourself going up here more products okay and you go to all products okay and then that loads up we scroll down a wee bit here with all that lovely toys <laughs> and then you go into the details of wave lab cast okay now the brilliant thing is here you get a trial version so all you have to do is download the trial version when you finish this show and you can get yourself a full working version and listen lads it's brilliant it's great crack you'll love it and it's super simple loads of information on there for you guys um you can buy it directly from the site of course okay so there it is field recording everything oh there you go if you already own some hardware device you might be able to get a free version of wave lab cast you can get it with um see there's an upgrade from le and there's an upgrade from different versions of le yeah and then you can buy the full version straight out but look at the education price fantastic if you're doing podcast or learning to be a podcaster or something like that or you're in college wow wow okay you can get if you buy a hardware recorder not necessarily this super duper machine you can get a version of it as well yeah there it is how simple was that super duper loving that so that's how you get your hands on wave loud cast and get a full demo full working demo so you can drag down the demo you can install it and then you can do exactly what we're doing in each show you catch the rest of the shows on the wave loud cast channel all right how hard is that is that you're all very quiet in here do you all want to say hello hi how is it going I don't bite, I promise. Um, if you do, I'm going to lash into this this mixing for in Wave Lab Cast, okay? And what I've done is I've put a little kind of show structure together and we'll look at different aspects of mixing, okay? With a nod to um, stuff we've done before, okay? Just a, as a little refresher or a little nod to that certain aspect if you haven't seen this show already. All right? brilliant happy days so where were we we were saying hello hello guys um i'm going to look over here and i'm going to look at this okay so this is our wave lab cast and as you can see i've only set up four tracks okay super simple super simple setup there's the introduction there's the voice or the interview whatever you want to call it a bit of music intro i've thrown these two pieces of music here for no other reason just to show you a couple of aspects we've talked about putting music throughout your podcast and how it affects the overall production it also affects the listener and how you address that so if you look back at that show as well uh it's titled music um there's some seriously um good information in there because um it's all about licensing and music it's it's exciting i promise it's not boring okay <laughs> it's great stuff okay happy days so wave lab cast guys wave lab cast so wave lab cast we flicked over here so we looked at editing before and this is kind of your workspace okay so with editing i can just grab a piece of music and drag it up and down you see there's two sides to that that's stereo this is mono because there's only one signal there okay which is mono there's left and right here left and right left and right there's interviews in stereo okay um so we can set up different tracks a stereo track a mono track or a video track and i want you to keep an eye on those video tracks because i think next time we should be looking at how to work with picture so you got how to work with picture we'll do a bit of editing with picture for you youtubers and you tiktokers out there tiktokers my that was involuntary by the way 
<laughs> so for all you TikTokers out there, uh, yeah, we'll do some editing to picture. So what we'll do is we'll bring in, you know, our camera audio, put a bit of sound effects, clean up the camera audio a wee bit, output our master. OK, so you bring in the video, you work to it and then you produce your master, which is basically a, a stereo file, right? That you will be matching back up to your video in iMovie or Windows Movie Maker or whatever the equivalent is nowadays. Yeah. OK, brilliant. Happy days. So we looked at, you know, editing the voice, editing music. OK, super important stuff when it comes to mixing. Mix, what is mixing? OK, so mixing. Uh, mixing is kind of delivering the final absolute and utter uh, 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 polish, if you will. OK, uh, I was trying, trying to think of another word, but it's it's slightly more than a polish in that you will find yourself doing a little bit of editing in there, okay? Um, I mix TV shows and I mix films and stuff like that. So I always find when you sit down to a mix, with all the best will in the world, getting your edit done, getting your dialogue done, there's always something left over that you have to address in the mix, okay? So you'll end up finding that you have to do little tweaks, okay? Ultimately, what we want to do is send all these four tracks out of our master bus. So if you could imagine a funnel, OK, and I think we had this analogy before. If you had a funnel and all your sound effects, all your music, all your dialogue is running into this funnel, it's going down the spout and it's coming out the end as one stereo file. And that's your master. OK, so that's what we're trying to achieve by mixing. OK. We've done an awful lot of cleanup with the track inspector. So in theory, our voiceover is nice and clean. Our interviews are nice and clean because we chopped out all the bad bits, the bangs and the whistles and the oh, uh, machine noise and all these different things that can affect the quality of the recording, including where you recorded it. Super important, super important. Check out the track inspector show how you can reduce the amount of reverbs on there. But before you even go on to need to reduce reverbs, that you're talking about recording it really well in a really good space. And that is such important learning. So go back uh, when you get a minute this weekend or whatever. Sit down, have a listen to that show. It is super important learning for anyone that intends to hit record on anything okay including video people and everything like that okay super learning so we were um looking at our edit so this is basically our edit and the thing about mixing is yeah you're polishing and you're cleaning and you're making sure everything sounds correct and at the correct level but the majority of the time I think the start of your mix you see I, I could go on for hours and hours about mixing TV and film right I'm trying to pair all that back so you're not completely overwhelmed because it can be daunting okay it can be super daunting you've done so much work so far you put your wireframe together you got your script together you got your voice over together you recorded those VOs beautifully you brought them all back you edited them they're fab they're brilliant right they're great they're just sitting right there now you got your music you got your music in brilliant we love the music okay so I'm gonna go over a few different things not the big overall thing that you should be looking at when you start mixing. But I'll give you a few super essential pointers right now, okay, about um, how you approach the mix and how you set it up and output it, okay? Super important. 
and you'll just develop your own skills when you start playing this. It's a super learning curve, super learning curve. Okay, let's get into it, lads, because there's no point in talking anymore. There's no point in talking. We, we got to look at these things. So how you lay out your mix is super important. If you throw a bit of dialogue here and a bit of dialogue here and a bit of dialogue here, and a bit of music up here, and a bit of music, ah, sure, listen, I'll throw that up there just because I can, you know, or I'll take that piece of audio and I'll just throw it down, listen, I'll just grab it there, right, I'll throw it down there, and I'll grab this piece of dialogue and I'll throw it there. Now, if you can see your playhead, see the playhead moving along? It goes through that, it goes through that, it goes through that beautiful bit of music. There's a bit of dialogue, now the dialogue is jumping down there. Now we've got a bit of music. Now the dialogue's jumping up there. So what I'm saying to you is a little step back from your edit and look at your track lay. A track lay is how you lay out your tracks. Okay. So what I always do in TV land, first track is king. That's the voiceover track. Okay. Next tracks are interview tracks. Next tracks could be, I don't know, sound effects, if you want it. Next tracks, music. So I know that I have a music track. If you have a look here, there's my music track. I'm just going to undo all those quick edits there, okay? There's my music one and my music two. So if I need to jump in and adjust something, I know exactly where it is. And I'll be honest with you, I learned to have a very simplistic track lay many decades ago when I started off in this game. Because imagine you took your project and you had to hand it over to somebody else. This is what I have in the back of my mind every time I sit down to do a mix. If I was that person receiving the project and it's a complete mess, bits of dialogue here, sound effects here, stuff everywhere, I wouldn't be very happy. I wouldn't be very impressed with the person that's just handed it to me. Okay. Also, you put it away for a year, you come back to it. You want to know exactly just by looking at it what's what and what's where because imagine you had a piece of voiceover that you used on occasion and you go back to the session three months ago and you know that your voiceover is on track one you don't have to go scooching through all these different clips on your timeline which could be an hour long and you have a shed load of clips you know it's voiceover so it's on track one or your man said something in episode 50 of our show that was super important and I'd love to reflect on that now I know all I have to do is look at my second track which is my interviews okay so you're just laying things out to make as super simple as possible it's called a track lay okay super important in tv super important in film um, and working to picture next week or next time when you come in here will be super, super important. Okay? So that's the very, before you even think about mixing, consider your track lane. Okay? Brilliant. And you can play around with it, guys. I mean, there's nothing to it. Whatever works for you. You don't have to go with, you know, track one voiceover, track two interviews. If that doesn't work for you, that's totally fine as well. You know? Find a workflow that works for you, you know, whatever's simple for you and whatever works in you getting your project out there. Yeah, brilliant. Happy day. So I've taken good consideration about how I've laid this out. Okay. My track lay is voiceover, track one, uh, interviews, track two, and music, track three and four. Why am I doing two tracks of music? Well, put it this way. I could bash everything up on top of each other. Okay? 
And believe me, I've gotten, I've received some serious edit, um, music editing tracks from video editors and people like that, that they literally just crash every single piece of music in on top of each other. Can I show you why personally I would um, set up a track? It's called checkerboarding. And this will save you on um, stress, <laughs> first off. Checkerboarding, basically, like a checkerboard. You know, you got your black and your white, and then you got a black and you got a white. So you're literally on the checkerboard, okay, or the chessboard, if you want to call it that. What you do is you place a piece of music here, and it plays a piece of music underneath. Next piece of music at the end of this piece of music, and that goes on the end. So imagine if you can see here, let me just show you a bit of checkerboarding. There's a piece of music that ends and that comes in there. Lovely. And then I grab that and that comes in there, which allows me to finish this piece of music in the mixing and setting up my fades and stuff like that without having to deal with any sort of cross fades. So what are cross fades? So let me just grab this piece of music. Come here to me, you. It won't shift. Oh. So let me just shift over here for two seconds. I know what the problem is here because you know what? I've had that before and it's just a pain. But anyway, what can you do? We're going to go and do this again. Let me just show you here. I'm going to go there and I'm looking for that. And I did that. See, I have screens everywhere. So I'm <laughs> you didn't see that gesture that I just did behind the camera. You know what I mean? Uh, so imagine I grab my piece of music. Where's my piece of music? Why won't I do that? There you go. Okay. So I can grab that and I can grab that. It's not allowing me shift that. Why isn't it doing that? That's crazy talk. So let me just do this. And no, that doesn't want to move. Okay. Let me just go again. It's just acting up. Sorry, lads, because this is live TV, right? Um. So let me explain to you. If I grab that down, there we go, finally. So imagine we have all our music on there. If I crash that into that, see the little arrows here? That's called a cross fade, okay? You can see here that the music is fading out. The reason the music is fading out is because I put a fade in there. See that? Okay, let me just scroll over here a little bit just to show you that. And I can make that fade as long as I want. See the way the waveform is changing? And that basically, instead of the music going da 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 da, it's going da 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 and out. Nice and softly and gently. Because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to smooth out all the transitions so we're not distracted from what's being said. Okay? And we talked about that with the music and stuff like that as well. Have a look at that show. Super. So this is what they call a cross fade, right? Now you can crash all your music in on one track, but I wouldn't advise it to be honest with you, okay? Because um, you're trying to match your cross fades and stuff like that. If you can check a board, right? Your cross fades there. You get much more control over one piece of music coming out and the other piece of music coming in. OK, that was just a double click on that. And I got that super duper little um, handle there to to bring. I suppose editors will call them keyframes. A lot of editors will call those keyframes. OK, so now that's nice and soft out and soft back in. So it's not a massive distraction that you got music on boom and boom coming in. And it's much softer on the ear. It's not a distraction because I'm not going, what was that? And now I'm not listening to the story or what's being said in uh, your interviews. Okay, brilliant. So if you can check or board your music, it's all part of your track lay. Okay, which is super important for your mixing. Yeah, now you can, absolutely you can. I'm going to go here. Look at this little function here. Oh, you can't see that. So I'm going here. Look. Imagine I had a load of fades in there and I just did that and I did that and I brought that down. See, double click gives you a keyframe. See that? And now I can bring that down. 
So I can manipulate these tracks as much as I want volume wise. Okay. If I want the whole thing, I wait for the tool to change to that. Can you see that? See the way the tool is changing there? It goes up here and changes there. And you can drag down the overall volume of your track. Okay. With these, we're changing specific points with these hit points. Now I'm just going to go into my that tool again. See the way it flicks over from the selector? We just go there and it's gone there. I go control and I can reset all or reset the whole thing to zero dB. Okay. So that's super important. So you can go back all the time. I mean, there is control Z all day long. No problem to you. But if you did find yourself, you know, clicking on something that you shouldn't have or accidentally clicking on a couple of things, it happens. You can just reset everything there. Okay, instead of hitting um, control Z. You can just reset everything. Take a breath and go back into it. Okay, brilliant. So overall, I'd say that music is way too loud for the dialogue. Okay, and I'm going to dra drag this down onto... Oh no, I'm not going to drag that down. I'm going to grab there, thank you. And I'm going to drag that down onto music 2. Why am I doing that? Okay. So what I've done here is, and you saw that before, remember the ducking situation? And we ducked, we set up our beautiful um, parameters for our ducking. So ducking is music's going along, music's going along, speech over here. Music just kind of smooths down underneath it automatically. So you can hear the speech much better. And that process in a professional DAW is a major process, okay? It would, it's scary for anyone not professional in doing it, right? It's super. But Wave Lab Cast takes on with all of that for you, okay? And gives you this super ducking function. It's brilliant, brilliant. So if you have a listen to this, let's just grab the cans. So music, music. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands. And Borderlands is culturally very significant, according to some gamers that are playing it. No we'll be hands. talking to Manus tonight, Watch and we're hoping that he'll give us an insight into what makes Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer. Borderlands, the, the first Borderlands. So here are those beautiful transitions, you know what I mean? really soft out with the voice coming in little bit of voice and really soft back up lovely level of music and then manus the interviewee comes in again the ducking kicks in brings the music down nice and soft and plays out okay which is brilliant love 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 that's on track one I have I have my ducking set up here but if you look at track two I don't have any ducking set up why don't I have any ducking set up this is for the people that do insist on putting music underneath all their dialogue okay I'm going to suggest that you just leave it work away on its own okay because if the audience hear ducking as an interview is going on it can be very 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 distracting so if you do insist on having a music bed underneath your whole interview which i'd suggest wouldn't be the way forward but if you do i would also suggest to you no ducking okay so now i have a non-ducking music track which means i can set the level for all my tracks underneath the voice so let's just have a listen to that okay and don't forget listen to the out of this music and the in of this music okay so attractive to the average gamer borderlands the, the first borderlands came out a good while ago and it was one of the first games i can't remember what the art style is called but it was one of the first games to use this technique uh, on their graphics that makes it kind of look like a, a comic book. What do we think? Where all the uh, lines are outlined in black. 
there's a lot going on in that piece of music underneath that interview isn't it <laughs> so you know what decision time get rid of it okay and i'm going to do a soft crossfade right so now i'm bringing the start of this in whilst this is happening okay so have a listen to this i'm doing this on purpose have a listen and so attractive to the average gamer Borderlands, the, the first Borderlands came out a good while ago and it was one of the first games, I can't remember what the art style is called, but it was one of the first games to use this technique uh, on their graphics that makes it kind of look like a, a comic book where all the uh, lines are outlined in black and all of it is, it's not really meant. So do you hear that level? I'm keeping it way down, okay? Now there was a lovely transition there and when I do that, see that, that's only the view. That's not nothing to do with changing the amplitude or the volume of any of these files. Okay, give me two seconds people. I just need to turn me, I was hearing myself back on those cans, I'm desperate. Um, I was testing something earlier today and I had to do that. But now I can't hear me. Yay! <laughs> so anyway, what I'm saying to you is, if I bring up the the volume of this, okay, let me show you a little trick, okay? I'm going to zoom in there. See these peaks? If I just play that bit there, can you see that there? See these peaks here? Have a listen. Just this. Those peaks you can see in the waveform are kick drums and snares, okay? So if I'm going to go and crossfade something, I'll automatically do something like this. I see, let me just grab this, lovely, yeah. So there, again, in this different piece of music, I'm seeing the peaks again. Now I know these two pieces of music are a different tempo, which means that they don't have the same uh, beats per minute okay so what i do do and try and do is grab the piece of music and drag it down and at least match one of them okay do you see that there is kind of hidden that and that one there is kind of hidden that okay now with my crossfade Okay, I'm just doing all this randomly. But this is all about mixing, guys. This is all about mixing. Have a listen. Borderlands, the, the first Borderlands came out a good while ago. And it was one of the first games. So let me just bring this back here so we just hear the, the crossfade. I'm going to crash them in a little harsher. Borderlands came out a good while ago. And it was one of the first games. Okay. I'll play that for you one more time. Let me just give you a little play in. Borderlands, the, the first Borderlands came out a good while ago, and it was one of the first games. I can't remember. Okay, so I'm going to soften the crossfade on that, but that is super important to just try and get the beats as close to possible. Because if I take those out of there, right? Have a listen to this. Came out a good while ago, and it was one of the first games. Do you understand what I mean? I'm just going to get more of this music going on here. Excuse me. Let me just play this for you. First games. I can't remember what the art style is called, but it was one of the first games to use this technique. That's blowing my mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, in your crossfading, when you're bringing in your next piece of music, try and get those beats in line as close to possible because you could hear the results there, okay? You got all those, that jumble happening, or else you can try and soften that, even if it's crossfading, okay? So let's just get our crossfades back. Let me just throw that there again. So I'm gonna go for there and there, which is kind of in and around. I'm gonna do my beautiful crossfades. And I'm literally just clicking and dragging here. It's super simple. First Borderlands came out a good while ago, and it was one of the first games. Okay, so that's a lovely soft transition, because you're not getting all over the place. 
which absolutely would wreck anyone's head. So when you're editing your music together, just keep an eye out for those kick drums and the uh, snares, yeah? So as you can get a much softer transition, okay? Now, again, right? Let me just split it here. Let me just go here, S. We have that crossfade happening here. If I crash that in on top of that, see you got your crossfades again, right here. And that is super important as well if you have to double up on your music. But use the space that you're given, okay? There's no point in crashing everything in on top of each other and stuff, okay? So let's find, see this? Can you see guys see that? See this kick there? I'm seeing the same kick here, look. So let me just drag that up to there and take that kick there, okay? And drag that down there. See that? Now they're on the same beat. If I extend that, okay, and drag that in on top of it, that transition will be as smooth. So if you have an interview and you're insisting on putting music underneath it, that's 15 minutes long, and you found a piece of music that's only three minutes long, you'll have to loop it, okay? And that's how you do that. Okay, maybe, okay, maybe this crossfade is way too much. But you need to line those kicks and those snares up together. So as you're in rhythm, because there's nothing worse than listening. Doom, doom, ch, ch, doom, doom, ch, 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 doom, and then hearing the music going again. So it's super important to be aware of that. Okay, brilliant. We have... I'm just going to leave it. I'll just take that out of that, just like that, and just to keep things nice and clean. Okay, I'm zooming out again. So you can zoom in and out with these rollers. See that? Isn't that good? And then if you want to see the waveform increasing and decreasing, not the volume, you can grab that and that. See that? If you need to um, find some really small clicks or stuff, that's super super handy okay brilliant so we've looked at you know our track inspector look there's a little bit of eq on that track can you see that a little bit of eq on the voiceover and then we went here did we do an oh yeah there's a bit of vocal exciter on there and a little bit of eq on the end of you okay and that's what all the track inspector is about little tweaks Letting Wave Lab Cast take on with an awful lot of the work. Okay. Check out the Trek Inspector show. We went through all of these. Brilliant. It was super fun. Super. Now, I'm going down here. The only thing I have on here is my ducking. Because the music's mixed and it's beautiful already. Right? It's beautiful. I don't know. And then we went, we have nothing in the Trek Inspector. Okay. And then the last piece of uh, music, nothing on there. I don't need it. The music is perfect as it is, as far as I'm concerned. The only thing that I'd be concerned about is the transition between the musics and the level of the music underneath the dialogue. Okay? So imagine interview ends here. That's great. Then we can grab a piece of music and we'll mix that up at the end of the interview. Again, we can use our ducking. I could drag this piece of music up onto the ducking track and see, is that sounding right? And now I'm saving myself a load of time by not putting in these keyframes, as the video editors would call them. And dragging, does that sound right? Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe if I dragged it, oh, I don't know about that. And then, uh, and I drag it up there and, oh, will that work? I don't know. The ducking function will help you hugely, okay? So for your transitions between interviews and voiceover, yeah, use your ducking track. For your music beds, by all means, non-ducking track. Or if it works for you, duck away. <laughs> you have the function on every single track you want. 
you know we had a question last week as well oh but it only gives you eight tracks listen my response to that was the Beatles only had four you know it's about your track light it's about your um, the way you lay things out your workflow okay it's all about that a tracks is more than enough for any sort of interview situation um, no matter how many contributors you have either do you know five contributors one track of audio or voiceover and one of music you know and you're still winning you know so there's an awful lot um, you can do to make sure that everything's running smoothly for you eight tracks is more than enough you know it's about being cl boxing clever with them do you know so now I have a ducking track now I have a non-ducking track I have my interviews that's going to be my interview track so I'm going to intercut my interviews on there and then I had another piece of voiceover imagine there was a piece of voiceover here uh, well there isn't so can I just drag that across and oh look at that sorry about that and then what I did was there's another piece of voiceover and again look doing all this now I don't like the way that's going so I'm going to go to the little volume envelope icon command click and reset all now I can go and do a nice fade there I can but I don't have to because I have my ducking but if it's on my music track then I do that and then I fade back out see that lovely loving it okay now I know that's too loud for the voice there currently but that's fine do you know what you do this is a very special trick that professionals throughout the world won't tell you it's the greatest secret about mixing you will ever ever learn you use your ears you have a listen <laughs> okay you get a good set of cans or headphones or you get a good set of speakers okay i got my big bad boys in this studio and you use these things because the more you use these things the better the mixing is going to be and you're training your ears to be aware know what's right know what's good instinctively you're a padawan use the force now understand the force now comes naturally to you because it's muscle memory in your head you know you know what sort of transitions work what transitions don't work okay it's all a beautiful learning curve and you're so excited brilliant so have a listen to this right I've just done a quick um, mix of the music in and out I fade it in bit of voiceover faded out okay so have a listen lines are outlined in black and all of it is it's not really meant to look realistic it's sort of cartoonish on this week's podcast we'll be talking about the game borderlands and borderlands is culturally very significant according to some gamers that are playing it we'll be talking to manas tonight and we're ho i think that's way too loud okay so even though it's a bit of voiceover and exciting and trying to keep things going but also did you hear that he just drops off there so uh, i just hit s split that out and i just want to make sure that that's consistent and i can hear exactly what he's saying at the end right this is all about mixing it's about making sure that your music is right under the voice it's hitting the right places and that you're not crashing in on top of things so we're mixing the, this uh, live. lines are outlined in black and all of it is it's not really meant to look realistic it's sort of cartoonish and I'm kind of missing the last of those words. It's not meant to be realistic. It's kind of cartoonish. Okay, so I'm going to increase the volume of that even more. Okay. Another keyframe. Sorry, get that up there. See that? And that's where we can get Manus up. Listen to this. Look realistic. It's sort of cartoonish. And On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game. Okay. So do you remember we we're losing the words cartoonish where all the uh, lines are outlined in black and all of it is it's not really meant to look realistic it's sort of cartoonish and 
On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands. And Borderlands is... That is much better for me. Now I'm hearing exactly what he is saying. And this is what the mixing is all about. Okay? I'll show you another aspect of mixing. Okay? So during the interview, we're listening to our interviewee. And uh, the pre-sequel, which I haven't played and I don't know much about. And the name of the game is what? Borderlands. And is there a company, a specific company that makes it? And can is it only for one console? I don't know if it's only for one console. Can you hear the difference there between the interviewer, yours truly, and the interviewee? The interviewer is louder. And I'll tell you why. Because I was holding the microphone here. Can you see that here? Let me just show you this technique. So personally, I would have had a handle. And this just happened to be sitting on the desk. So I'm doing my uh, interview. I'm interviewing you. And then I do that. So the proximity of the microphones to your mouth is a, a bigger distance. Okay. So the volume is more, if you understand what I mean. So I need to correct that in my mix. Because I need my dialogue all the same level. Okay. So... Manus is talking, Manus is talking, Manus is talking. Interviewer comes in here. So I'm just going to drop that slightly. Okay. And the, 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 the waveform will give you a good indication. There's its amplitude. Now here's his amplitude. Have a listen again. Which I haven't played and I don't know much oh, about. Oh, sorry. And the name of the game is what? Borderlands. Okay. I think I'm a little low now. So th let's try that. Which I haven't played and I don't know much about. And the name of the game is what? Borderlands. That's so much better. And is there so a company, a specific company that makes it? So and don't forget. Can, is it only for oh, one sorry. console? Shut up, kid. Don't forget, you know, little things like the sentence trailing off at the end from your interviewer, interviewee, <laughs> the person you're interviewing, right? Super important because they're not necessarily professional uh voice people or they know how to use microphones too well okay they're learning as well so there might be a, a little bit of tailing off at the end so we need to compensate at the end of all these sentences okay to make sure we don't lose any of those things but we also got to mix that dialogue track all of it to make sure it sounds consistent okay so that's why i brought down the the volume of the interviewer okay and again it's about track lay okay i'm going to set up a stereo track can you see that there click there's my stereo track i go interviewer i n t e r v i e w e r <laughs> you guys just talk amongst yourselves you know, while the dyslexic gets going on the typing and then you just grab the pieces of interviewer okay so now there's more interviewer. How do I know that's more interviewer? Because look, the amplitude is much bigger. Okay. I think that might be, ma I'm just looking at the waveform here, guys. Explain the, the situation for yourself. I don't want to play a rented copy because of. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to split it out there. Grab it and drag it down. Oh, sorry. I have to get the other side, loves. And we just grab that there and hit S and I'm going to grab that and I'm going to drag it down. So this is my interviewer track. OK, so now I can bring down all my volumes because I know. I'll generally be consistent in the same interview. My delivery will be the consistent in the same interview. Now, if I'm going in to interview somebody in a noisy train station, or a noisy street, then again, you're going to be different, dealing with different uh, levels and volumes. Okay. But by checkerboarding your stuff, by checkerboarding your tracks, by checkerboarding your participants, okay, you've got much more control over it. So if I'm swinging in to do this gig, you get sick. I have to do finish the mix for you. Imagine 
All I have to do is look. Oh, there's the host. There's the interviewer. Interviewer, interviewee, music. Brilliant. Easy. Now I know exactly where I'm going. Okay. So a little thinking about that will save you a whole world of pain. Whole world of pain. Now, imagine we've gone through our show. Okay. No, I better come up to you here. Um, we've gone through our whole show. Our dialogue's amazing. We love the level of our music. Okay. We love the level of our voiceover. And I think we're nearly there. Okay. One thing that will most probably happen in 99.999999999% of um, professional productions is a compressor on the end just in case there's a little jump of a volume of something somewhere okay it keeps things consistent like we were doing with the dialogue it keeps things consistent and we looked at compression i think it was two shows back okay and that'll bring you you see here you're looking at this and this is wonderful we got our track inspector and we looked at additional effects but that additional effects is only for each of these tracks there's a compressor on there on our host we did this before okay if you go up here to master section we come up with this this is your master output so this is the end of the funnel if you can use that analogy okay and we were talking about all the bits falling down into the funnel and this is the spout okay so everything goes through here let me just find all my show again i just put my always over back there okay as soon as i get it there thank you and drag me always over and that's lovely so imagine these are all our elements yeah so let me just play the music and there's the show's output Okay. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands, and Borderlands is culturally very significant, according to some gamers that are playing it. We'll be talking to Manus tonight, and we're hoping and here's that he'll give us an insight okay. into what makes Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer. Borderlands, the, the first Borderlands. So this is the spout of the funnel, okay? And this is what we all need to look at, because this is what that stereo file is going to be made up of your master okay and to control things you have the option in wave loudcast to do things like compressors now this is if i click on there i get to see all my plugins that i have in this system which are vast and varied because this is a professional system you mightn't have as many okay you may but you, you might not, okay? So, I have a little bit of compression going on on the top of everything. So again, watch this. See, it's only a tickle. It's only a tickle. It's just controlling things. Wait till the voiceover comes On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game okay. Borderlands. And Borderlands is culturally very significant. Yeah, I've shifted a load of things around. I wasn't listening to it at that time. Let me just have a listen. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands, and Borderlands is culturally very significant, according to some... Okay, great. So, the compressor is, like we talked about before, there to control loud bits and bring up quiet bits and stuff. And make, make, see this waveform here? See that loud bit? Whoop, excuse me. See that loud bit? And there's a quiet bit. And there's more loud stuff there okay and you can see the peaks in the end of view as well see the peaks there so by us compressing games, that i can't remember what the art style is called but it was one of the first games to use this technique we're keeping the overall dynamic of the show a little more controlled and we're making our show sound more audible okay this is a, a steinberg compressor it's absolutely gorgeous it's clean as a whistle and the makeup here. We went through all the parameters of this in the last show. Let me just show you that. Whatever show that was that we did compression. Um, 
your auto makeup as well so you reduce something it kind of brings up the level just to compensate for it so you get a much more consistent overall output yeah um you're all very quiet in here tonight is there anyone that wants to ask me any questions because we're kind of running out of time guys um delighted to have you in here these are just pointers there's an awful lot to uh, mixing. But if you're stuck, go back. Go through the video slowly. Pick out the bits that you are struggling with and look at your track lay. Super, super, super important. How you deal with your music how it's placed within your timeline. Super important, okay? The levels, the, 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 the volume of your interviews, interviewer versus interviewee, or five contributors, how they all sound together consistently, okay? I might just show you something like that again in that um, I'd love you to see an edit of five voices and what we do is we cut out the when somebody's not talking on a specific track and another person is talking on another track we cut out that little piece of audio so the only thing you're hearing is this piece of audio up here and it just cleans things up it's very labor intensive but it does clean things up there's professional machines out there that does it automatically so um and you can do it with a thing called gating but we won't get into that tonight okay <laughs> it's another process that can be used you can edit it out of course you can and it keeps things really clean so you can either cut out the audio when there's not a signal on the mic at that point you can gate it or you can use these other super expensive toys so there's your master section you can see that there can you yes you can now again you can put up any plugin you need to help your overall master okay when you've done all the good work when it sounds amazing to you, okay? We're gonna output the file. And we output the file with this render button. Okay, see that render button there? And that literally renders the whole thing out for you. And we look at that and we look at, see this upload episode? So whatever your, um, wherever your podcasting host service is it uploads to uh, your space automatically okay not your space <laughs> to your space <laughs> as opposed to your space do you hear what i'm saying yeah and uh, it goes up there automatically and it's it's just everything's boom brilliant okay but i think we'll look at the editing to picture next time yeah does anyone have any questions? You're all very quiet as mice. Have a look around the interface. Have a look at the demo. Get the demo and install it on a machine. Okay. Um, if you don't have a machine, borrow a machine and install it on there. I'm sure your granny or some person has an old machine somewhere in the house, in their house and somewhere else. Um, if you have an old machine and a super crockety, um, you can always put what they call an SSD in there, a solid state hard drive. And these solid state hard drives are super quick. So it, you take an old machine, put in a solid state drive to replace the hard drive, install your operating system, whether it's Linux or Windows or, uh, OS X. Uh, and you've a much faster machine, much faster machine. Okay. Um, 
my pal had a 15 year old Mac under the bed for a decade who has just got chock-a-block so I put it in an SSD into her machine for her I've done it to loads of machines my wife's machine everything and it's just transforms the machines so you don't have to buy the latest greatest okay is what I'm saying to you you don't have to break the bank um, and you can find a consistent machine running well for you get Wavelab cast on there try out the um, trial version so you understand what you're looking at look back at the shows because it's you'll pinch yourself as to how easy it can be for you it's really 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 easy okay um, put a couple of audio files in there record in a couple of audio files and jumble them around mix them up check it out output a file some content creation now you're a content creator whether it's TikTok or whether it's a podcast whether it's music it doesn't matter you're creating you're being that person you always wanted to be because if you weren't doing it you wouldn't be stepping down this road in the first place right it's so much fun you're going to have such a good time I'm going to have to log in and leave you and that was a lovely thing guys I know you're all quiet as church mice <laughs> you're all in there no, it's like, don't say a word don't ask the question because uh, I look like a gambian you won't look like a gambian I'm sure there's other people in here that would ask the same question so we'll see you next time okay and we'll look at editing to picture okay editing to picture um, means that you know you get your voice over you get a bit of a PTC piece to camera so it's me you know down the local park going now today in the local park we have you know there's a piece to camera like a news piece or something like that and we'll bring that in with a bit of voice over and then a bit of interview and a bit of music okay or something yeah and we'll edit all those together and then ultimately we'll go to deliverables and delivering of your final master okay the one thing i did not mention tonight and i've mentioned it loads and loads of times i did push across it excuse me keep an eye on your levels the man is tonight and we're hoping that he'll give us a level meter okay your sound level meter I'm just going to mute that and just play it so you can see the meter and hear me your sound level meters is how the machine hears this audio if I go over to my master section if I drop that right down see the way it all disappears and the level is really low that means if the machine can't hear it nobody else will okay so let's just bring that up that's your consistent with all the compression okay I'd bring that up slightly okay so I'm just going to take my master out and he was very quiet there so have a look at that see how much it comes up so play with those as well okay this is all your pan there's different options there see the functions here you can go to the settings and turn stuff on and off if it's too much for you okay let me just apply that now see how simple that is so you can just let's apply that there you go see that your vu meter loudness there's your resolution it doesn't really matter that's just keeping things simple for you and apply that now you can see your panning panning is stuff left and right okay i'm just gonna okay that so there's your sound level meters and if you're not getting a good level on there if the machine isn't hearing it nobody else is going to hear it now there are a lot of um, uh, hosting services that'll overlook what level your content is at um, and bring it up or bring it down so um, on a loudness meter you should be heading for about minus 13 
okay that's your target but that's way in the future <laughs> okay right now let's just get our show together use the track inspector do a beautiful track lay select our music edit the music nicely we'll get our beautiful crossfades going the level in comparison to the voice is doing really well and all our contributors and a little bit of compression on the outside on the the spout of the funnel you have one serious mix going on and i'll be honest with you because i've heard an awful lot of these podcasts it's most probably if you can keep an eye on those few things you're probably having a much better mix than an awful lot of content out there not mentioning any names <laughs> but you know what i mean seriously seriously just those few things and you'd be rocking and rolling okay you're beautiful people um, i wish we could have talked more the store chat still nobody saying nothing not to worry maybe next time will you join me next time keep an eye on the wave lab um channel subscribe to it click the subscribe and then the the little bell and then basically when i put up the notification for the next show um we can see then and we'll all sit down and have a chat that time okay but in the meantime i'm gonna love you and leave you i hope you got loads from that that was super stuff really enjoy that and we'll look at editing to picture next time okay um that's super exciting that's really really fun to do love editing to picture should sure, do it for a living <laughs> anyway i'm gonna love you and leave you um have a great evening and a great weekend and we'll talk to you sooner than later bye bye